Hello and welcome to Vidorama, where we remember those classic video rentals of the past and paint tributes to it. Today we are saluting the 1982 Larry Cohen classic Q the Winged Serpent, starring Michael Moriarty, David Carradine, Candy Clark and Shaft himself Richard Roundtree. This is a return visit, thank you, I am delighted that you could join me once again. And if this is your first time here, welcome. It's a simple premise we have here really. In each episode I salute the movies that we used to rent on VHS from the video shop back in the day, reliving those glory gory days creating a painting. So make yourself comfortable and enjoy the creative process and reminisce along with me. But perhaps before we do that I think I should briefly explain my process. I rewatch the movie, this time making notes, and create a rough sketch as I do so. And then once I'm happy with the details and the likenesses, I then photocopy the sketch onto thin A3 card for painting. The paints I use are acrylics, and I limit myself to three colours for this project, and for this particular piece I use Mars Black, Titanium White, and Medium Yellow. The detail is then reapplied using a thin nibbed permanent ink marker pen. If I have missed anything out and you wish to know more about my process, leave your questions in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. So here we are at our first star. In the last episode we featured John Carradine and this time round we have his son, David Carradine. Born in 1936, David Carradine, much like his father, had a prolific career, perhaps best remembered for his martial arts roles and most notably playing Kane in the 1970s television series Kung Fu. In a career that spanned six decades, he appeared in over a hundred films, yet despite receiving numerous Academy Award, Golden Globe and Emmy Award nominations, along with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, he is more often regarded as a B-movie actor. Not a term I like to use, I hasten to add. Having established himself as a household name in Kung Fu, when the show ended in 1975, he immediately accepted the role as a race car driver Frankenstein in Roger Corman's Death Race 2000 to distance himself from the show. So many movies, so little time. I, I will name some of my favourites, uh, Sundown the Vampire in Retreat, Evil Toons, Future Zone and then Future Force and of course this film in which he plays Detective Shepard investigating a series of bizarre ritual murders committed by a secret neo-Aztec cult while coming to terms with the reality that a large creature has actually been prayed into existence and is now picking off the residents of New York City. So many great movies though and I'm certain we will see him again in a future episode. Oh, I was uh, recently asked what was my favourite part of painting. Well, it's coming up right now. Pop. Paint. Pop. So, the movie itself. If you can't tell by now, I love this movie. I would say it's my favourite of all of Larry Cohen's movies. Already an established writer for television, he was keen to have full creative control of his work, and so turned to directing. But it was when he was fired from directing I, the Jury, he immediately started working on this movie. The film is notable for having many great shots of the creature Quetzalcoatl and were achieved using both stop motion animation and a prop talon that was used for the live action close up shots of the victims being picked and carried off. Examples of Cohen making good use of the reported million dollar budget. The creature effects and the acting talent aside, the film also beautifully shows off the city of New York and the world that exists on its higher levels using various helicopter shots. As the Empire State Building was associated with King Kong, Cohen set about giving the Chrysler Building its very own monster, and when the owners of the building refused permission for the movie to be filmed there, he continued to offer them more and more money until they agreed. He famously made full use of the renovation work that was being carried out at the time, using the construction tarps to catch all the shells that fell from the live rounds fired from the building. It was reported that this caused minor panic in New York. He later apologised and made full use of the shots of the public panicking on the streets below. A practice one would expect of a Larry Cohen production. Despite all that and the unbelievable risks he took filming 80 stories up, the film was completed on time and released on October 29, 1982 to favourable reviews. 
and it has long since remained a cult classic. As you can see, I'm just adding the finer detail to the wing here. Now, something happened during this painting that doesn't happen too often, but it was around this point that I started to second guess my decision to give her those long fingers. And so I decided to paint over them and start again, instead opting for the more realistic talent seen in the live action shots. Not ideal, as the acrylic and the pen can work against me at times, and it tends to create a rough surface, and sometimes the pen will show through when I reapply the paint. As you can see, several layers of white paint had to be applied. All the while I was trying to keep as smooth a finish as possible. See, I scan these paintings once completed and the scanner can be very unforgiving when it comes to a rough painted surface. All the previous marks gone and the paint dry, I then drew a new set of talons. I actually used a photograph of a vulture as a source of reference for these. And then I proceeded to repaint them. It took longer than usual, but there we go, it has to be just right. See, these videos are all about me sharing the entire process with you. I'd say mistakes and all, but we don't make mistakes around here, we just have happy accidents. I think I made the right choice. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Or give the video a thumbs up. Or better still, do both. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? Well how about you go and do that while I finish painting this leg? Done it? Brilliant. I'm now reapplying the detail to the Chrysler building. Oh did you also ring that notification bell? They tell me it helps the channel and it informs you when the next video has been uploaded. If you have done all that, thank you. We have now arrived at the second star, and let's be honest, the man who stole the show, Mr. Michael Moriarty, who delivers a memorable performance. Born in 1941, he is also an actor of distinction, having received an Emmy and a Golden Globe. A chance meeting at a restaurant brought him in contact with Cohen, who offered him the role of Jimmy Quinn, a down-on-his-luck ex-con with dreams of becoming a jazz pianist who finds himself in the middle of a botched diamond heist. Although the movie is actually about a giant Aztec winged reptile, the story also focuses on the Quinn character and how he reluctantly becomes evolved and tries to use the situation to his advantage. Moriarty being a jazz pianist in real life, Cohen wrote this into the script to please Moriarty and it shows as he's clearly having a ball playing this role. Just finishing the eyes now. Wait for it. Bop. Bop. The first movie I ever saw him in was Troll where he played Harry Potter Senior. However this would have to be my personal favourite performance of his with his character of Moe in The Stuff being a very close second. With all those previously mentioned movies behind him, you can be sure we haven't seen the last of him on this channel. I'm just adding the tracking lines to the painting. There we go. So the movie's tagline informs us its name is Quetzalcoatl. Just call it Q. That's all you'll have time to say before it tears you apart. Well, Q is the feathered serpent said to be the Aztec god of wind, air and learning. The movie makes an effort to relay the legend behind this deity, which I can't confirm to be true nor false, and I dare say there are others online that can do a far better job than me. What I can tell you with certainty, however, is that this is actually the second time this creature featured in a horror film. There was also The Flying Serpent, released in 1946, starring George Zuko, who plays an archaeologist who, having discovered the bird, unleashes it on his enemies.
If you haven't seen the movie yet, rest assured I will not be giving away any spoiler here, but the creature has been summoned and it now lives in New York City, nesting in the Chrysler building. It feeds on various unfortunate people it locates on the rooftops. As you can see, I changed my mind on how that tongue should look. I wanted the tongue to have a mid-squawk quality to it. There is a prehistoric quality to this creature that I love to draw. If you've been following the channel you will note that this is actually the second time the winged serpent has been depicted in one of my paintings. If you check out my The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs time-lapse painting part 1, there's the link, this movie featured in that series lineup and the painting from the video featured in issue 5 of the Joe Bob Briggs fan scene. Well this painting will feature in issue 6. All the details can be found in the video description. Just follow the link and tell them Arvon sent you. So how are you getting on with the voiceover? In the last video I asked if you preferred it to the usual format. It seems you preferred it and found it to be informative, so I stuck with it. I was also asked if I have an Instagram page. I have. And all these paintings along with numerous other pre-YouTube pieces can be found there. Just follow the link in the description. Nearly there. Bop. Can't well have a painting devoted to Q the Winged Serpent without featuring the Chrysler building, can we? This magnificent Art Deco style building was the world's tallest building for 11 months before being surpassed by the Empire State Building in 1931. With its various eagles perched on the structure, you can well understand why Cohen picked it for this movie. As you can imagine, there was a lot of detail to be added here, a process I also enjoy. All those little windows and frames. I love it. Now we're getting on to the other theme of the movie, human sacrifice. During the movie, the police keep finding the remains of men who have willingly given themselves up to ritual sacrifice to a secret neo-Aztec cult. Before I started this project, I wanted to include the plumed serpent priest in there somewhere, as it would seem he is essentially to blame for all this. A fun fact, this movie actually features two Carradines in it. Bruce Carradine briefly played the last sacrifice in the movie. We don't get to see the priest's regalia much in the movie, but I did the best I could. In fact, the very first drawing I did for this project was that mask, presumably based on the Aztec carvings. It's a great design that I found very satisfying to draw. It's as detailed as the Chrysler building. Being Aztec themed, naturally we had to have the sun in there somewhere. But I will also add that on a personal level, when I visited the Empire State Building, as I made my way down, the sun was just setting. And I love the way the sun was being reflected on the Chrysler Building, and so referred to some of the photos I took at the time as reference. Looking back now, I guess I painted that building three times, didn't I? But it was worth it. My personal reasons aside, the yellow served as a contrast colour between the creature's feet and the building, breaking up the grey. So how are you getting on there? Are you enjoying this video? Have my effort earned a thumbs up?
and here you can see me using my phone as reference, just checking on that last bit of detail there. Well this painting, I hope, serves as a loving tribute to a great movie, but I would also like to dedicate it to Larry Cohen. Having always been a fan of his work, I was saddened to hear of his passing last year. He was responsible for so many great works. He gave us so many great TV shows and movies to enjoy. His style and playful commentary on life shine through in all his work, and they will live on for years to come. You can be certain that It's Alive and The Stuff will feature on this channel very soon, along with other movies that he played a part in creating. Let me know your favourite Larry Cohen movie in the comments. completing that Aztec look now. As I stated at the beginning of this video, these videos are created as a nostalgic look back to celebrate the movies that I rented back in the day, that I hope either inspire you to create something yourself or watch the movie for yourself, be it again or for the first time. Please feel free to suggest movies you would like to see featured on the channel, I I'd love to hear them. Oh, I almost forgot. I was also asked, what paints do I use? Um, having used Dollar Rowney paints for over 10 years, I have been using Reeves acrylic paint of late. This isn't a paid promotion, I might add. I'm just answering a question. If you have questions about my process or the materials used in these videos, leave them in the comment section and I will answer them in the next video. all about the detail. I'm essentially wrapping up here now so I would just like to say thank you for all your comments and likes and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for listening to me prattling on and thank you for watching. I sincerely hope these videos are of interest to you. Let's finish this now and then I will add my signature so you know it was me that did it. I hope you will join me again soon for another video rental from the past, but until then, be sure to check out the other videos I have, and please don't forget to be kind, like, and subscribe.